Max reveals a big issue with Red Bull's hungry upgrade, more team order drama as Stroll failed to help out Fernando, and McLaren gets criticized for poorly managing their drivers. Do consider subscribing to the channel. Let's get straight into the latest F1 news. Nico Rosberg, citing an example with Lewis Hamilton from his 2016 title-winning year, has urged McLaren to better handle driver instructions, or risk a Lando Norris and Oscar Piastri fallout. McLaren locked out the front row in Hungary, Norris ahead of Piastri, but it was Piastri who got the better start and swooped into the lead. His path to victory, though, was complicated greatly by McLaren at the final round of pit stops. Pitting Norris before Piastri, the Brit would undercut his teammate and take over the race lead, though McLaren ordered him to return that P1 spot. Initial refusal followed as Norris began to pull away, though he ultimately obliged and let Piastri through to take his first Grand Prix victory. With that only McLaren's second 1-2 finish over the last 14 years, Rosberg acknowledges that it is a new situation for this McLaren to be the dominant team in a race, but feels this highlighted setting driver instructions as an area of their game that needs urgent attention. Arguing that they took the shine off Piastri's first win with this team orders drama, Rosberg said an internal fallout could strike if McLaren do not act. First of all, McLaren are still in the learning curve here, because they've not been in this situation before, Sikia being so dominant and having two drivers at the front there, said Rosberg, who served as a Sky F1 pundit in Hungary. It's a new situation. So of course they need to learn things. And one of the things they do need to learn clearly is how to manage the two drivers out there. They didn't do a perfect job there because all this negotiation blah 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 and here and there and change their mind, and the only way to do it there is make a very clear plan. Pre-race. How do we race each other? What is the team orders? When, where, how, and then you stick to it and clear instructions and that's the only way to do it. And that's going to be a learning that they now need to go through very quickly, otherwise they risk an internal fallout also between the drivers. You can see Lando, especially today, being very unhappy now after the race, and even Oscar, you've taken away some of the excitement from his win, you know, with all these discussions. So clearly, they need to work on this and make progress. Rosberg, to provide an example, recalled the 2016 Monaco Grand Prix where he yielded position to Mercedes' teammate and at that time, fierce rival Lewis Hamilton. Despite both drivers chasing the title, Rosberg said Mercedes had made it crystal clear to he and Hamilton pre-race that the faster driver takes priority if the win was under threat. There's the example in my championship year 2016, said Rosberg. I was second in Monaco in the rain. Lewis was third. And the team said I need to let Lewis pass. And we are fighting for the championship between the two of us, and I need to let Lewis pass. And I did so, but only because before the race, it was crystal clear how we are fighting each other. And it was crystal clear that if there's a threat for the team to lose the race win, Daniel Ricciardo was disappearing in the distance, then we must make sure the faster of the two team drivers is let through to try and fight for the win, so I let Lewis pass. McLaren's 1-2 saw them take a major chunk out of Red Bull's Constructors' Championship lead, the gap now down to 51 points. Daniel Ricciardo slammed an early pit call from V-Carb as a frustrating move that ruined the driver's race at the Hungarian Grand Prix, leaving the Australian to finish 12th, outside of the points. After the race, Ricciardo made it clear to media that he felt he had been put on the wrong strategy by V-Carb and that he could have finished the Hungarian GP inside the points, just like his teammate Yuki Tsunoda. A chaotic Hungarian GP saw plenty of focus paid to Lando Norris, Oscar Piastri, Max Verstappen, and their dramatic radio calls with their engineers. But that meant many viewers missed a heated post-race radio call from Daniel Ricciardo. I'm really trying to bite my tongue, but you must know how I feel about the first stop, Ricciardo said as he pulled into Parc Ferme. Okay, understood, his race engineer Pierre Hamelin replied. If you feel the same, please... We need to review everything, was the final call from the V-Carb team. Let's rewind the clocks to recall exactly what happened. Ricciardo started the race on a medium compound tire, and then, shockingly, was called into the pits for a replacement on lap 8. The call left Ricciardo fighting an uphill battle through traffic as the tires withered beneath him. Understandably, Ricciardo had a lot to say about the call after the race. Why they pitted me when they did at the beginning was, we followed the soft, tire-shod cars in, Ricardo told Assembled Media. 
They've just come in, we have a clear track, and we decided to pit behind them and put ourselves in a DRS train. On the same tire. We're all on a hard. That was. I've had a lot of races and I've had a lot of frustrating ones, but that's up there. We had the pace and we basically gave Yuki the race that we had in front of us. And we both could have done that. And we didn't. Asked if he questioned the decision from the pit box, Ricardo said he didn't have time. It's a late call, box, 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 and you pit, he explained. But honestly, as soon as I'm pulling in the pits, I'm questioning it. But you know, you get called in turn 13 and you have to react. We talk about strategies and that, but two cars jumped us at the start with a soft tire. That's fine, let them go. They pit and we follow them to then just be on their strategy. We would have had clear air and a chance to, I think, from what I understand, do Yuki's race, so yeah, I don't know. Adding insult to injury was the fact that Ricardo felt the team was solidly to blame for the poor call that cost them a points-paying finish, but he didn't an apology. Honestly, I was expecting more, he admitted. On the in-lap, I was waiting for, sorry, we fucked up, and I didn't get it, so that made me even more angry. Ricardo reiterated several times to the media that he didn't understand why V-Carb had pitted so early rather than use up the medium tires. He also pointed out another element of the race that frustrated him, being asked to continue fighting, despite his older tire Doc Ox. Like Stroll's catching me a second a lap and maybe more, and they're saying, you know, it's really important to keep him behind, Ricardo said. What do you want me to do? You've pitted me so early I'm on older tires. It's like, so I'm also being expected to fight when we're not really in a fight anymore, so that was also frustrating. There were times where it just felt like the bed was made. While a 12th place finish isn't the end of the world, it's certainly a frustrating result for a team and a driver fighting hard to secure every single possible point. With 11 points, Ricardo sits in 13th position in the Drivers' Championship, one spot behind Sonoda. However, V-Carb's 6th place in the Constructors' Championship is quickly being threatened by Haas. Trying to find a positive about his race, Ricardo mused, I don't know if by doing that that allowed Yuki to score points. But from my understanding, we both could have done it. We were both quick enough. We had the pace all weekend. Unless I'm missing something, and I really don't think I am. I guess I'll hear all about it in the next hour. McLaren were not alone in ordering their drivers to revert positions in Hungary, but Lance Stroll did not listen to his Aston Martin team. The focus was on McLaren out front when it came to their team orders as they looked to secure a 1-2 finish. Instructions which almost turned a routine charge to the checkered flag into something far more controversial. Oscar Piastri led the race for McLaren until the second round of pit stops, where McLaren undercut him with teammate Lando Norris who assumed the lead, though with the order to let Piastri back through. For some 20 laps he refused to do so. Norris ultimately obliged, allowing Piastri to take his first Grand Prix win, but Stroll was not so cooperative down at Aston Martin when they told him to yield P10, and the final point to teammate Fernando Alonso. In a radio exchange missed by the TV broadcast, Stroll's race engineer Andrew Vizard requested several times that Stroll allow Alonso through into P10 before the checkered flag. Now! You need to switch back before the line. Fernando is four seconds behind you. There's no pressure behind, came the first request. That was met by silence. Lance, I suggest you drop back. Let Fernando pass. He's four seconds back, Vizard urged again. Still, Stroll had no reply to offer. Okay, that's the flag. That is the flag. With that final message from Vizard, Stroll's window to let Alonso through had gone, and he claimed the final point on offer in Hungary. Neither Aston Martin driver addressed this team order's snub after the race, though Alonso, who started on the soft tire and pitted for the first time on lap 7, believed the wrong strategy was chosen. I think the strategy was not the right one today, he said. Obviously, now after the race, easy to say. I think we stopped on lap 7, and then from that point, 63 laps with one medium, one hard, was a little bit optimistic. So, not a great pace, and the strategy didn't help. Sitting P5 in the Constructors' Championship, Aston Martin must keep a close eye on V-Carb a position and just 36 points behind after the Hungarian Grand Prix. Max Verstappen was overheard criticizing the upgraded Red Bull RB20 in a hungry driver's parade chat with Daniel Ricciardo, dropping the bombshell that Red Bull overdid it with this package, in his opinion. 
Without a victory since the Spanish Grand Prix, Red Bull looked to turn the tide against the improving McLaren and Mercedes with a significant upgrade package for their RB20 at the Hungarian Grand Prix. The results, though, were not to Verstappen's liking. McLaren would dominate the Hungarian Grand Prix, Lando Norris taking pole from teammate Oscar Piastri before Piastri headed a McLaren 1-2 in the race. While Verstappen was very much in the pole hunt, McLaren were in control on race day, Verstappen ultimately finishing P5 after tangling with Lewis Hamilton at Turn 1 as they battled for the last podium place. And during the driver's parade ahead of that race, a camera picked up Verstappen talking to Ricardo, one half of the driver lineup at Red Bull's junior team V-Carb, where he told Ricardo that the upgrade may have improved the RB20 in corners, but its issues are far from fixed. Corners, it might be better, but the characteristic of the car is still the same, Verstappen told Ricciardo. So it's slow on entry with the rear and in the mid-corner understeer. And in what could be a crucial reveal for the rest of Verstappen's and Red Bull's season, the Dutchman expressed his belief to Ricciardo that we overdid it with this RB20 upgrade. I think we overdid it, Verstappen claimed. It's so on the rear, and I don't know sometimes how to compensate for that. Verstappen also had some public criticism of the RB20 upgrades to offer, claiming some members of the Red Bull team needed to wake up regarding their situation. Red Bull senior advisor Helmut Marko had declared the upgrades work, though Verstappen made it clear that he was naming no names. The McLarens are one and two, so that car just goes like a bullet, said Verstappen after qualifying, as per Racing News 365. With us, it's just very difficult because it's just really hard to find a good balance. It's very easy to go over and then you immediately lose quite a lot of time. With all those upgrades, it's still not good enough. I do feel frustrated about that. I had hoped it would have brought a bit more. Everything is working, but not the steps we want to make, I think. I said on Friday that it wasn't optimal. At least they know that I don't make excuses. I'm always very realistic about that. But maybe not everyone is on the same wavelength. That doesn't frustrate me, but I do think that some people need to wake up a little. We don't have to go into detail about who they are. While Verstappen's driver's championship lead over Norris was cut slightly to 76 points, McLaren slashed Red Bull's constructor's championship buffer to 51 points. Charles Leclerc is bracing for Ferrari's weaknesses to be most visible in Belgium after paying the price in the Hungarian Grand Prix. Ferrari brought a floor update to the Hungaroring in a bid to try and undo the bouncing that has been reintroduced into the SF24 after a Spanish GP upgrade, with Leclerc qualifying in sixth place, nearly two-tenths slower than Carlos Sainz, who himself was four-and-a-half-tenths down on pole sitter Lando Norris in fourth. In the race, the car swapped positions with Leclerc banking fourth, passing Max Verstappen after his off after colliding with Lewis Hamilton on a day he felt the car had decent pace, but was left lamenting the qualifying deficit in the machine. It was good, but that is not enough to satisfy me, Leclerc told media, including Racing News 365. Looking at the overall picture, we are still lacking a lot of qualifying pace compared to our main competitors, and so on tracks like this we will pay the price. So I think we had a strong car, but don't think we could have done much more considering our starting position. The qualifying pace, especially with Carlos who did a very good lap, I think is the gap, and on a track like this we were four tenths behind and I don't think there was much more in the car. Spa is going to be a real test for us because it is probably the track where I expect our issues to be most visible. We will see if we have the confirmation that there is a lot of work to do before we get our issues fixed and whether the upgrades of this weekend helped us to make a step forward. As for his actual race, Leclerc was pleasantly surprised at how Ferrari could follow the Mercedes of Hamilton in the opening stages in the dirty air, but was not pleased with a strategy call ahead of the final stint. The pace was quite strong, but at a track like Budapest, it is very difficult to actually overtake, but we were in a good place, he added. The first and second stints were strong, but then we had to make a choice for the last stint to whether we box with Lewis and took the place with Max, or whether we stayed out with Max. We decided to come in, which I think was a bad choice, and that made our last stint very tricky because I was on very used mediums when Max came back, but the pace was there. We expected it to be close, but I felt like we had a bit of an edge because, on a track where dirty air is so detrimental for the car behind, I felt like I could follow quite nicely. Sky F1 commentator David Croft 
repeatedly made a point about Max Verstappen's early morning sim racing after a fiery approach to team radio in Hungary, leading to backlash for Croft. Verstappen consistently vented his anger over the radio regarding strategy and his collision with Lewis Hamilton at the Hungarian Grand Prix. His race engineer Giampiero Lambiase bearing the brunt of that as things got tense between driver and race engineer once again. Not for the first time, Verstappen was mixing his real-life racing activities with the virtual world, taking part in the 24 Hours of Spa event, which saw Verstappen up at 3 a.m. competing before the Hungarian Grand Prix. Sky F1 lead commentator Croft made sure to point this out more than once when Verstappen was unleashing on Lambiase over the radio. I don't want to sound too critical, but Max Verstappen is sounding like a man who stayed up late last night doing a sim race, which he did, and then got up early this morning to do a sim race, which he did, rather than getting a good night's sleep in Budapest, which by the sounds of it he could probably have done with, said Croft during the race. Croft repeatedly linking Verstappen's grumpy nature to his sim racing activities led to a flurry of fan criticism aimed at Croft on social media. Crofty seriously needs to stop this Max should have went to sleep instead of sim racing BS, one fan posted. The problem is not Max, it's the car. Crofty shut up about Max doing sim races, it's nine times now, mate, another fan posted. You know it's bad when Ted Kravitz is sticking up for Max and saying that he has won a race before whilst doing sim racing the evening before. Had enough of Crofty's awful commentary, came another critical comment. I'm no Max Verstappen fan, but if Crofty mentions Max Verstappen staying up late again playing sim races, I might have to mute Sky F1, another fan posted. In a more detailed post, one fan claimed that Croft's commentary was borderlining distasteful and risked reputational damage. Amongst all the madness around Lewis, Max, McLarens, and whatnot, let's not forget the disaster class of a commentary Sky had today, the fan posted. This was not a race where there was zero action. This was not a race where jack shit was going on that you needed fillers. This was certainly not a race where Max was even contending for the win. The almost distasteful level of he sounds like a driver who was sim racing late at night mentions is a poor look. It's okay if Sky Sports is a British broadcast, but this level of targeting and frankly distasteful commentary is just not on and it should be called out. Verstappen went on to finish the Hungarian GP P5 after colliding with Hamilton in combat for the final podium spot. Earlier, Racing News 365 reported that Renault was considering to abandon its 2026 F1 engine project. In the paddock in Hungary, it seems Alpine is actually looking to move on and partner with Mercedes from 2026. Several sources let Racing News 365 know that. Alpine is said to have held several talks, including with Red Bull powertrains, amongst others, but ultimately the French hope to move forward with Mercedes engines. Mercedes is also positive about a collaboration, and it looks like the parties are going to come out of it. That means Renault will have to put a final stop to the development of the 2026 power unit in the near future. Of course, the French have already made major investments in the development of the engine in recent years, so it would be a tough decision to actually stop the project. This does not necessarily mean, by the way, that many employees would suddenly be out on the street. They could be distributed to different projects within Renault's motorsports division. Thus, the employees involved in the project would remain valuable to the major automaker and could thus remain employed by Renault. Another option is that the technical knowledge already acquired by Renault could be bought up by another F1 team engine supplier. In theory, even the entire engine department could be taken over by another party. So for now, no final decision has been made by Renault. But there seems to be a growing likelihood that Alpine will race Mercedes engines in 2026. It is a fervent wish of advisor Briatore, who has proven during his previous periods in F1 that he can be successful in the king class of motorsport. The eventual decision to discontinue the Renault F1 engine project may be considered rigorous, but this suits the leadership style of the flamboyant Italian. During the Spanish Grand Prix, Alpine also informed Carlos Sainz that they might be in action with Mercedes engines from 2026. Partly because of this, Alpine became an interesting option for the Spaniard, although Sainz has still not made a decision about his future. Should Alpine announce a deal with Mercedes in the near future, however, the question remains whether Sainz will actually choose Alpine. Despite the fact that the current Ferrari driver seems to be enamored with an Alpine with a Mercedes engine, Toto Wolff also seems to have opened the door again for Sainz at his Mercedes team.
This is by no means to say that a switch from Alpine to Mercedes engines will mean that Sainz will make the switch to Alpine. Pierre Gasly signed for Alpine before, when there was no talk of a possible switch to Mercedes engines. As such, the French driver does not seem to have a preference as to which power unit will be in the Alpine. Gasly was also approached by other F1 teams, but chose not to wait for Sainz's decision and extend his contract with Alpine. Sources revealed in the paddock in Hungary that Alpine and Renault will make a final decision regarding the F1 team's engine future even before the Belgian Grand Prix. Whilst there is a growing likelihood that they will opt for Mercedes engines, however, at the moment it is not out of the question that they will continue with the Renault project as yet. Thanks for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.